This scripture points out that the strangers or other ethnic groups that settle side by side with the children of Israel will climb the social and economic ladder higher than the Hebrews as a group, while the Hebrews will slip down to a lowly state. Historically, the United States has kept in place a hierarchical class structure that puts European whites, Asians, Hispanics, and Indians above blacks with an even greater social acceptability. However, the American government and the dominant white society have never systematically targeted these groups for destruction. The ancestors of black Israelites were in America before the ancestors of today's Jews, Italians, Germans, French, Japanese, Chinese, and Hispanics. Yet all these ethnic groups were relegated to a much higher social status than blacks who have been kept at the lowest position in America. The disorientation that takes place with that so-called Negro versus the one who was basically raised in his own uh, nation, who knows his language, who knows his religion, knows where he stands, knows about his, his history, his tradition, so on and so forth. That is automatically a stronger person. And that is why a lot of times you, you see people coming to this country and you see them starting their businesses, they're starting to move a lot faster, and then we start to say, well, why is it we've been here all this time, they started their business, and so on and so forth, because these people didn't come over here disorientated, they have not been told that they're niggas, they have been told that they're no good, they have been told that they're nobody, they, their history hasn't been robbed, they already know who they are, so they can come over here with nothing and start, because they, they know who they are. And so that's the type of uh, mentality that we have that's going on in the Middle that's East. That's the so-called Middle East, the so-called Middle East, so -called. that um, you are dealing with people. And this is why they are totally underestimated, because this white supremacy and arrogance, this mentality, totally underestimate this group of people every time, because they are not the submissive, confused, disorientated people that they seem to think the Negro uh, would be like the Negro. So when they go over there, they will. I believe these people will fight to their last bullet. I believe they will fight to their last bomb. I believe they will fight. They will. Boy, I'm talking about the so-called rented Negro over here, and that's making people mad. They're going to kill their so-called uh, Uncle Tom Iraqis because see that's how strong they are about what they believe in they're not going to allow someone to side with the oppressor that will create all of this havoc and rob their children for generation after generation the way we have well. Deuteronomy 28:44, he the stranger shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him he shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail Statistics show that the so-called Negro is content to waste a hefty percentage of their yearly disposable income on businesses in the white communities, with a smaller proportion going towards black businesses. They take their money to the stranger, which creates jobs for their people, while the black Hebrew remains at the bottom of the economic ladder. Obadiah Yisrael points out that only in black Hebrew communities will you see other immigrant groups owning nearly all the businesses. For example, observe the people who call themselves Jews. They own a large percentage of currency exchange stores, banks and lending agencies. The Arabs own the grocery stores and fast food restaurants. The Asians own the clothing stores and beauty salons. The East Indians own the convenience stores and gas stations. And the whites own everything else. The black Hebrew Israelite owns little to nothing in their community. Since virtually all black economic power goes into the hands of the stranger, it elevates the stranger to a much higher social and economic bracket, which in turn gives him the resources to lend to blacks, who in turn are unable to lend to the stranger. Blacks generally have to go outside their community to the stranger to obtain loans for cars, mortgages, business, and even for social events. Deuteronomy 28.45 Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and thou shalt pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenedest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded thee, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. Deuteronomy 28.48 Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he hath destroyed thee. Isaiah 3.12 states, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. 
O my people, they which lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your paths. This scripture states that women will rule over the true Israeli Hebrew. The Hebrew female has been placed above the Hebrew male for as long as we have been here in America. The Hebrew female income has surpassed Hebrew males. It has been this way since 1954. Slavery intentionally placed the female in a dominant role over the male. Hebrew males who were forced into a status below the Hebrew female and totally powerless to protect her against the slave master. In 1712, a white slave owner by the name of William Lynch from the West Indies wrote a letter to slave owners in the U.S. In his letter, he outlined a plan he had devised for keeping the slaves docile and ignorant. He said that the slave owners must put the female slave over the male slaves and make the male slave fearful and dependent on the slave master. This has been the historical role for us in this country for hundreds of years. Women continue to rule over us. Deuteronomy 28:48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. The last section of the verse states that the oppressors will place yokes of iron around the necks of the black Hebrew. And since the word yoke also means agency of oppression, servitude, subjection, and slavery, it suggests that the black Hebrew population has an iron yoke around its neck even today, as their oppressors still continue to keep them in subjection after 400 years of mental programming. These verses indicate that no matter where Israel goes, these curses will be a burden on them because Israel chose not to obey the commands of Yah. Again, if those who say they are Jews today are the descendants of Israel, they should be under the curses outlined in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28, irregardless of which country they reside in. The conditions should mimic the present plight of the true Hebrews of the Western Hemisphere, but they do not. These curses or signs are the clearest guides to distinguishing who the children of Israel are, since God stresses that these curses would be a sign and a wonder on Israel forever. So whichever racial group suffers from all these curses can proclaim to be the true descendants of the seed of Israel. These curses are only seen on black Hebrew Israelites. Isaiah 3.12 As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. My people, they which lead thee cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. God is speaking to his specific people and the people that are in the land now. Children are their oppressors. Our children that used to be obedient, which the scripture is calling our children still to be, children obey your parents, that now the children are acting in the role of parents. And children are oppressing their parents. Not only are they oppressing their parents, they're oppressing our society in the sense that the crime rate is elevated, in the sense that children um, have no discipline, they have no morals. They're using our young men to be gangbangers. Our young women are soliciting themselves. And um, the children are now, not only are they oppressed, but they are oppressors. Okay? And it says, children are their oppressors. Women rule over them. In the order of God, men were ordained to be the head of the household and to be the leaders in our community. And it is not so because, first of all, for the black man, he's such a threat in this community that he has been so oppressed that the society has so made it that the women are ruling over the men. It's been hard for our black men to be the leaders that they are called to be because of the economic system that we live in. But if we return and get the spiritual teaching that the churches, some churches are failing to give, and putting the man in his proper role as the leader and the head of his household. It means sacrifice. This way of holiness means sacrifice. It means that we're going to have to let go of the things of the world. So what you can't live in that million dollar house if your man is the head of the household. As long as your family is intact, it's a matter of choosing your priorities and deciding who you're going to serve. You can't serve mammon 
money. You can't serve this society and serve God or serve Yahweh in the beauty that he originally created, which is what he's calling us back to. We're living in a church age where in the book of Revelations, he talks about we're living in the time where the church is being judged. Our leaders are being judged because they have erred. They have not told us all the truth. They've told us a portion of the truth.